We have here NHL Chief Content Officer and Executive Vice President Steve Mayer for opening comments. <clears throat> Uh, welcome everybody, and uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, our centennial year started January 1st. Uh, we are six months in. Uh, throughout the year, uh, many different events, initiatives. Uh, many of you uh, were with us in Los Angeles at the All-Star Game, where we revealed the top 100 players of all time. And uh, since the beginning of the playoffs, we have been asking our fans to choose the greatest NHL team of all time. Uh, the numbers have been staggering. Uh, over four million votes. Uh, there have been nine million page views. Uh, we started with 96 Stanley Cup winners. We narrowed it down to 50, then to 20. And, um, and now um, we are ready today to announce the greatest NHL team ever. Um, fans have been spending an average of five minutes of time on our website, which is really high, and we'd like to thank the fans for uh, their participation. Uh, starting with game one of the Stanley Cup final, we've been <coughs> revealing the top ten, and so I'd like to show you a recap of the top ten through the top two. Number 10, the 2001-2002 Detroit Red Wings. Number 9, the 1983-84 Edmonton Oilers. Number 8, the 1977-78 Montreal Canadiens. Number seven, the 1982-83 New York Islanders. Number six, the 1997-98 Detroit Red Wings. Number five, the 1986-87 Edmonton Oilers. Number four, the 1987-88 Edmonton Oilers. Number three, the 1976-77 Montreal Canadiens. Number two, the 1991-92 Pittsburgh Penguins. We'd also like to thank um, our sponsors, SAP in the United States and Honda in Canada. And now uh, it's time to reveal uh, what the fans feel is the greatest NHL team of all time. Led by six future Hall of Famers, including Wayne Gretzky, who topped the NHL in goals, assists, and points to earn his sixth consecutive Hart Trophy, and Paul Coffey, who won the Norris Trophy for the first time, the 1984-85 Edmonton Oilers showed they were intent upon defending their title. The Oilers finished 49-20-11 in the regular season, scoring 103 more goals than they allowed. The Oilers continued to thrill once the postseason began. They swept both the Los Angeles Kings and the Winnipeg Jets and then scored 44 goals in six games to eliminate the Chicago Blackhawks. Facing the Philadelphia Flyers in the Stanley Cup Final, Edmonton lost the series opener, but then won the next four games to hoist the Stanley Cup for a second consecutive year. Gretzky set playoff records with 30 assists and 47 points to win the Conn Smythe Trophy. So there you have it, the 84-85 Edmonton Oilers, the NHL's greatest team, and I'm proud to bring up here uh, the captain of that team, Hart Trophy winner from that year, and our centennial ambassador. Please welcome Wayne Gretzky.
Thank you very much, and uh, I want to uh, thank Steve for the invitation to be part of this uh, history and be uh, one of the 25 guys who was part of that Edmonton Oilers team. Uh, I want to, first of all, congratulate all the uh, prospects who are here and wish them good luck. As Gordy Howe told me when I was 17 years old, it's the greatest game in the world and the greatest life that you can ever have. So work hard and have fun. And rewards are endless. Uh, first and foremost, I want to congratulate the city of Nashville, uh, Mr. Coyle, and their organization. This has been just, as a fan, outstanding for the game of hockey that Nashville uh, people here have drawn to our game and our sport and uh, rallied around the Predators and made the game even bigger and better throughout North America. And so. Congratulations to the fans and organization of the National Predators. Uh, you're probably, this is going to be the most controversial pick that we've ever seen in the sense that there's so many great teams. I would have voted for our 87 team. Uh, that was me personally. If I couldn't vote for our teams, I probably would have voted for the Montreal team that was led by young Ken Dryden and John Beliveau and John Ferguson and upset the Bruins in Game 7 went on to win a Stanley Cup. So there's no perfect answer here to what is the best team. We feel proud and privileged as an organization that the fans stepped up and voted for this team of the Edmonton Oilers. It's hard to win a Stanley Cup and it's hard to get your name on the Stanley Cup, but there's no better feeling and there's no greater reward than when the commissioner presents you the Stanley Cup as a captain and as a team it's one of the greatest traditions in all of sports. So, again, I feel proud and privileged to represent the Edmonton Oilers. Uh, I want to thank all the fans again for voting for us. And uh, if anybody has any questions, I'll stand here. Start with him. Kevin on the left here. Yeah, Wayne. Uh, obviously, when we think of the Oilers in the '80s, uh, we think of offense. But obviously, you had the world caliber goaltending and defense. Can you sort of just talk about how that team was just more than offense? Well, listen, to, to be a Stanley Cup champion, you have to have a whole package. You've got to be fast, you've got to be strong, you've got to be offensive, you've got to have good goaltending, you've got to have good coaching, you've got to be good defensively, and you've got to be really disciplined, and you've got to have that will to want to win. And we had a will to want to win. Uh, I've told this story many times before. I had lunch with Brian Trotsky at one time, the first time he won the Stanley Cup. And I was a young kid and I said to him, I said, what does it feel like to lift the Stanley Cup? And he started to go into this dialogue and he said, you know, I wish every player could get that chance to win it. And then he stopped himself and he said, but nobody, not everybody does get that chance. And that's what makes winning the Stanley Cup so special. And so from our, our point of view, our team, we were unselfish, we worked hard, and uh, consequently we, able to lift that Stanley Cup, and that's what it's all about. Steve on the left side. Wayne, the, there were no 50 goal scorers in the NHL this year. There were three 40 goal scorers. If you go back to that era of the Edmonton Oilers on those teams, I'm recalling four and five 40 plus scorers most years. How do you, with all the young talent in the NHL right now, increase goal scoring? Well, listen, I've said this before. These kids today are so good. They're so big. They're so fast. The equipment's better. The goaltending, they're bigger. They're better athletes. Grant Fuhr, Patrick Waugh, Martin Brevere changed goaltending in the 80s uh, that athletes became goaltenders. And so a lot of the best athletes on each team are the goaltenders. So it starts there, and that makes it more and more difficult to score. At a young age now, we're taught so much about defensive hockey. You know, in the old days with Bellavo and Bobby Orr and Guy Lafleur and myself and Messier, we used to throw a puck on the pond and you go out there and you would create and you just skate, you play three on three, four on four. The game now is so structured. Uh, two of the better defensive players in the game today are Connor McDavid and Austin Matthews, and they're 19 years old and 20 years old. So they're taught so much about the game from the defensive side of the puck. 
So the way the game is now, it's much more defensive. It's harder to score 40 goals today than it was when we played. And I'm the first guy to acknowledge that. I came around in the, in the right era. I played with the right organization, the right players, and the right time. It's a lot tougher now to be a 40 goal scorer. But <clears throat> that doesn't mean the game is uh, different. It just means it's better today. It's, these kids are really good. Most importantly, you guys cover these kids. They're very respectful of the game. They're respectful of their families, their organizations, the cities. Uh, it's just a very good positive for the sport of hockey. We're in a really great place right now. Chris up front right. Wayne, you were still playing uh, the last time we had a repeat champion mm -hmm. uh, in the Stanley Cup final. I'm wondering why you think it's been so hard and, and what does it take uh, to get the job done in back-to-back well, -back years? Listen, uh, once we develop the revenue sharing, to strengthen the league and make the teams from one through 30 competitive. It made it difficult. And a guy like Stan Bowman, I think, has done a wonderful job of, you know, he's got such a great team, and yet he has to be able to manage that and let guys go and still be competitive. So it's probably a little bit harder today with, uh, with the salary cap to build a dynasty and build teams that can win two or three years in a row. The advantage Pittsburgh has when you have a player like Crosby and Malcolm, obviously that gives you a foot forward and obviously gives you a little bit of an advantage. So this is a tough situation for all these teams in the National Hockey League. Anybody can get to the Stanley Cup final now. Uh, we have one through 16 to make the playoffs, and the LA Kings proved finishing eighth that you can win the Stanley Cup. Nashville finished eighth this year and win the Stanley Cup final. So the, from that point of view, the business side of the game has changed. On the left side, back left. Uh, Wayne, uh, which one of these other great teams uh, do you think would present the toughest matchup for your 84, 85 Oilers mm -hmm. and why? Well, for me, it's pretty easy, the, the 91 Penguin team, uh, because, you know, athletes are, uh, have a lot of pride, and so Mario and I would have battled against each other. Uh, we had so much respect for each other, and said this a million times, that he's the best player I ever played against. And that fires you up as athletes, and you want to compete against the best. Uh, whether I was 18 years old playing against Peter Fleur, or 28 years old playing against Mario, that's what the game is about. So, with Tommy Barrasso and Graham Fear and guys like that, uh, question would have been, is coffee on our team or their team? So that could have been a difference. <laughs> we would have taken them back. On the right side, Rob. Wayne, you mentioned um, the salary cap and the parity. Uh, knowing that, and knowing that this is the fourth final for Crosby and Malkin, um, where do you think they stand historically as a tandem? And what should they be measured by going forward now? And what do they have to do to sort of crack the upper echelon all time? Well, I think they've cracked the upper echelon. I don't think there's any question that those two guys deserve to be up there when you talk about uh, LeMaire, Lefleur, uh, Bossy, Trottier, Gretzky, Messier. They've done everything that you know you can do as a professional athlete. What they're doing now is adding on to it. Uh, and in this day and age, as I said, it's probably a lot tougher for them. So good for them. They deserve all the accolades they're getting. They've been a positive for the National Hockey League and they've been great for the city of Pittsburgh. So that's the good news. And uh, they're fun to watch, you know. I live in California and people who don't know a lot, a lot about hockey that I talk to, I'm always encouraging them to watch this guy and watch that guy. And obviously those two guys are always at the top of the list. Left side, third row. When you were part of a group of stars all over the league that really elevated the game in the 80s, and I'm curious how you think that group compares to, to the stars that we see today in the league? Well, it's tough to compare because the game is so different. You know, it's like in the 80s, it was tough to compare against the guys in the 60s. Uh, you know, I always say to people, what we accomplished and what I did, I'm very proud of, and nobody can take that away from me or us. Uh, but these kids today, it's different. They're bigger, they're faster, the equipment's better, uh, the coaching's different. It's tough to compare. Uh, but all I can say is we did the best we could do in the 80s. How we, we, how we could compare today, I'm not sure, but I know one. But uh, they've all been positive for the game. We'll take questions from Paul Coffey as well. Next question, front left. 
Wayne, you mentioned Nashville when you first started talking. Uh, you played here Nashville's first year, had five assists and a 7-4 win. Talk about your impression of the city today compared to back then you know, in terms of a hockey city. So it's, uh, that year was, uh, I decided the All-Star game, which was played in Tampa Bay, and Tampa Bay now is getting the All-Star game back this year, so good from Stevie and Tampa Bay fans. That's exciting. Uh, I knew it was going to be my last sort of three months, and I came into Nashville. I knew it was going to be my only game ever in Nashville. And I remember I was thinking, I hope I have a good game because this is going to be the only time I'll ever play in Nashville. And you always remember players by the one time you saw them. So I was fired up to play, and I was ready to play, and I was excited to play, and thankfully I had a really good night that night. Back left, standing up. Yeah, Wayne, uh, and then Paul, if you want to take a crack at this too. You mentioned guys being bigger, faster, stronger. What can the league do to take away headshots, and should there be a no tolerance policy? Let Paul answer that one. <laughs> Over to you. Well, I just just listened to Wayne's last comment about being excited to play a national because it was his only game here. You must have played a lot of games like that because you had a lot of great games and a lot of rigs. So uh, anyway, the headshots. I mean, I don't. Know. I mean, the game is so great. The game is so big and strong. I don't think it's. Uh, I don't think it's purpose, uh, what the players do, how they can sanction it, I don't know. It's a dangerous thing, we all know that. I think the league is uh, taking the right precautions for sure with, with the timeout and making the players uh, go through the proper protocol. But it's fast out there, and it's big, and I think they're doing their best. Back left sitting there. Uh, Wayne and Paul, there's been a lot of talk about Nashville being one of the loudest arenas in the, in the league. Can you guys talk about how much that impacts you when you guys played? Was it something that you just played with your skill, played hard, and did you have an impact from the fans out there? You go first. Well, I think as an athlete, there's nothing, there's nothing better than playing on the road. There's nothing better than going into uh, enemy territory and uh, taking the crowd right out of it. I know ourselves in our early days going into Calgary or Philadelphia for sure, Toronto or Montreal, you always want to get that early lead and then get the crowd out of the game. You know, what they're doing here in Nashville is absolutely incredible. You know, I think when they uh, first came into the league, people were wondering if they would embrace hockey. But I think that's certainly been answered over the last uh, 10 or so years and certainly this series. Yeah, and I think that, uh, not to be negative about it, but every rink in the playoffs is really loud. Like, it doesn't matter where you play. Like, you can ask the Anaheim and San Jose players playing in Edmonton in the first two rounds. Our, our arena was pretty loud. I know as a player playing in Edmonton, it was pretty exciting and pretty, pretty vocal. I used to love playing in Philadelphia because the spectrum was so loud, and uh, Mr. Schneider was the biggest Flyer fan that ever lived, and you could see him up there in his box cheering. And when we did have the good fortune sometimes to quiet the crowd down, there was this guy with signs that he would just never go away. <laughs> he still had his signs up, but you know that's the fun of the playoffs. It was the Boston Garden, the Chicago Stadium. Winnipeg Arena, the Spectrum, that's what it was all about. That's what makes the playoffs so fun. And you talk to anybody, and again, I see a lot of people that always say to me, is there anything better than the Stanley Cup playoffs? And it really isn't. It's just really exciting for everybody. Wayne, I just always wonder, who's your favorite black athlete of all time? <laughs> Grand Fear. <laughs> That was quick. He wasn't on that team. That was quick. <laughs> nice to see you. Thank you, my friend. Biggest hockey fan in North America, right here. Literally. <laughs> but I'm going on a diet, so. <laughs> he texted me the other night and he said, is there anything better than being in a locker room if Stanley got playoff game? I wish I was in there. <laughs> okay, we'll go back to questions. Ken, <laughs> back up. I, I was actually just going to ask Paul what you what you think of this Nashville Predators defense core, the, the big four that they have here in Nashville. Pretty, uh, pretty impressive. I mean, they could, they're mobile, they make great plays, they defend well, and to me, you know, all six of them play the game the way the game should be played. You know, there's not a lot of plays that uh, are safe. Uh, that's the reason why they're forwards. Uh, certainly, last game got to go in the. Uh, they make a great first pass and stick to stick, and you know they can all play in any single area. It's nice to watch. Steve on the left. Uh, Wayne. When you and Paul won your first Stanley Cup, 
you did it against a New York Islanders team that the year before had kicked you pretty good. Mm -hmm. That team won 19 straight playoff series. Yep. Is there enough historical love for what the New York Islanders accomplished? Well, I hope so, because if it wasn't for the New York Islanders, we would have never won a Stanley Cup, because we had so much respect for them, and we learned from them uh, that the unselfishness of guys like Bossy and Trache and Podman and Billy Smith, that's how we became champions. So I hope they're getting the just due that they deserve. Guys like Tonelli and Nystrom and Bob Warren, uh, they were a good hockey club. Uh, and you know, again, I know I said at the beginning, it's controversial. Who was the greatest team ever? We're honored and thrilled to be part of it, but there's so many great teams, and so many teams that could have been part of this. The New York Ranger team won in 94. And just, there's a lot of good, good hockey teams out there. Uh, hopefully everybody understands that uh, there's no right or wrong who number one or two is. This is just, conversation that people can have and talk about and debate that will go on for a long time. Who would, who would be the best basketball team under? Well, <laughs> if you watch TV today, it'd be the, it would be the Warriors. Uh, I like the Bird Celtics, Magic Lakers, are my two greatest champions ever. And I think Michael Bulls are after those two groups. But it's all like, it's, it's just all your opinion, to be honest with you. Charles, let's keep right it talking. Let's keep it talking down here. What brought you here, and what hooked you on hockey? I started following hockey actually in Birmingham, Alabama. We had a, a team called the Bulls back in the day. That was my first recollection of hockey. And then when I got to Philadelphia, my favorite hockey player of all time was Ron Hextall. Uh, I got to know him and Eric Lindros, going to a bunch of flyer games. Uh, and then Mike Wilbon, one of my mentors, kicked me to the Stanley Cup playoffs with the Blackhawks the last few years. And I was in Alabama, and I'm here, I'm talking to JR, who I talked to quite a bit, he's my neighbor in Arizona. He's like, man, you gotta come to Nashville for a game. He's just the craziest thing I've ever seen. And then I get a really nice call from Commissioner Beckman. Uh, he said, hey, it's all the nice thing you can say about hockey, come to a game. I said, hey, I got nothing to do. <laughs> uh, so, so I'm really looking forward to tonight. But they say it's crazy. And uh, the, the playoffs in hockey have been amazing. Uh, you know, obviously, I, I'm not breaking earth shot or new. Not, NBA playoffs have not been very good. <laughs> um, the best thing about my job is when I'm in work for two straight months, like the NHL playoffs, I'm in a room with 20 televisions. And I watch pretty much every single hockey game. I think we showed a stat. We've only had four basketball games out of in the playoffs that were less than double digits. And so it's not been a lot of fun broadcasting games this year. Back right. Wayne, in your uh, opening statement, you made reference to the uh, 1971 Canadians with Jean Vigneau and Ken Dryden. If I'm counting right, you were just 10 years old. Yeah. What was so special about that team? Honestly, my next door neighbor is a Habs fan and I was cheering for the Bruins. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, it was an amazing uh, run because Boston at that time finished ahead of them in the standings and they had a young goaltender I think only played six games that year and nobody knew who Ken Dryden was. And I think that, uh, and I watch a lot of old hockey tapes and I didn't realize I knew the importance of John Ferguson, but I didn't know how good he was as a player. I, everybody knew his reputation of being tough and physical, but he was so good in that series and uh, such a factor. John Bellavo was John Bellavo. It was just, I looked at that team and I was like, okay, it wasn't the best team that won the Stanley Cup that year, but they were the best group of guys that won the Stanley Cup that year. So that was kind of the team that uh, when I saw this thing coming together, what team would you vote for other than the Oilers? That was sort of the team that I kind of reached out to. Players have in common hockey and basketball, the Gretzky's and the Jordans, Crosby, LeBron. And then, who's your favorite NHL player and who's the Barkley of the NHL? Well, number one, I told you my favorite hockey player all the time is Ron Hextall, because I want to know if my guy really cares. If you watch Ron Hextall play, you know he really wanted to win. 
so he's my favorite play, hockey player. You know, a lot of the brothers, we root for Seth Jones because his father played in the NBA. We don't, we don't know a lot about hockey. We just, we probably should play, pay more attention to the regular season because there's nothing more nerve wracking than Stanley Club Cup overtime hockey. It's the craziest thing you ever gonna see. And so that's one of the reasons I just love the sport. The, what, the one thing that all great players have in common is teammates. What I mean by that is, you see what Kevin Durant's doing now? Man, when you play with great players like this, the game is so easy for you. Like Kevin Durant's always been great. I give an example and I'm not comparing myself, but that's not, it's not about me. Like I won MVP when I went to Phoenix. I was a much better player in Philly, but when they gave me Dan Marley and Kevin Johnson, I was like, Woo, this is the easiest 25 points ever. <laughs> like when you get 30 points in a game, it's a lot of hard work. When you get 25, you're like, man, I don't have to do everything. And I think you're seeing that with Kevin Durant. He's a great player, but when you play with other great players, it is the easiest thing in the world. Like obviously they are better than people, but when they get teammates who take some of the responsibility, we don't have to get every rebound, score every basket, uh, get every stop. The game is just so easy. That's what they have in common. They have some good teammates. I mean, obviously, Wayne, Michael, Larry, Magic, they're great, but the game is easy for them when they're playing with other great players. Last question, back up. Uh, Paul, uh, Wayne said that the 91-92 Penguins would be hypothetically the toughest matchup for the 84-85 Oilers. Um, speaking of yourself, uh, who is a better Paul Coffey? 84-85 Coffey or 91-92 Coffey? <laughs> well, I, would, I, would, I would like to thank you for doing it, but, uh, 88 Coffey. 88, there you go, but uh, I don't know, it's tough to compare seasons. You know, I think that... Uh, you think you know it all at 24 years old, but you don't. And as you get older, you get a little more experience, and you uh, you play the game a little smarter. Thanks, guys. Let me just say this one thing about great teams. <laughs> the teams that win a lot, they're the greatest team. Because I think the one thing that you guys don't understand, man, winning is hard. Winning is hard. Like, we all want to win. <laughs> You know, we all want to win. But when you talk about great teams, teams that win multiple championships, I always put them on a pedestal because these teams that win one time and never win again, that's cool. But to win all the time is a big deal. Thank you very much, guys. I know. You might not have had a good answer.